Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on HECRAS, and in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about geometric data, specifically lateral structures. All right, lateral structures is a structure that's for the most part parallel to the stream or channel, and it's meant to serve as a way to convey flow out of that stream or channel using a weir or embankment or a culvert or a gate. What I have on the screen here is my HECRAS. I have my main GUI for the files up at the top, and then my geometric data editor down below here. It's a simple river reach that flows downstream where there's a station or a cross section at every one station or 100 feet. And then on the left bank of this station between 200 and 100 stationing cross section, I have this lateral structure here, as you can see from the plan view. Lesson eight dealt with inline structures, and now this is lesson nine. We're dealing with lateral structures. There's definitely a lot of overlap between these two lessons. Inline structures are per positioned for the most part perpendicular to the main direction of the river channel, whereas lateral structures are parallel. Lateral structures control the lateral exchange of water between the main river and adjacent areas like floodplains and storage areas. So in the geometric data editor here, I'll click on the lateral structure button, and then this opens up my lateral structure editor. As you see, I already have one lateral structure right here. It happens to be on river A, reach one, and I'm giving it the name 180, which I believe is the station of the upstream most edge right here. Right now I have a weir and a gate already defined. I'm going to go ahead and delete the gate. And then we can just focus on the weir first, and then we can add that gate back in. Lateral structures can include any combination of weirs, gates, culverts, rating curves, and time series outlets. Lateral structures can be connected to storage areas, 2D flow areas, and even another river reach. So right now, I've got this lake here, which is a storage area, lake one, I call it. And what I'm going to do is have the flow in this river, which is flowing downstream. Some of it would be diverted through this little cross section here, through the weir, or any other gate or culvert that I add to this lateral structure, and then it would be diverted to my lake. To create a new lateral structure, you come up to Options, Add Lateral Structure. If you already have a lateral structure, you can just go ahead and select that specific lateral structure, and then come up to Options, Copy Lateral Structure. And then, as you notice, there's also options for renaming the river station and deleting the, the lateral structure. Let's go ahead and just delete this lateral structure and then build it from scratch. Okay. So it's gone. And the plan view doesn't update, I believe, until I close this. Yes. Okay, so lateral structure. Let's options, add lateral structure. I'll call it 180 again. And then click OK. Next, we have a description, which we can fill out if we want. And then what we want to say for the headwater position is either left over bank, right over bank, or then next to the left or right bank station. The bank station represented by this red dot here, which is defined in the cross section. So let me let me open up a cross section and just demonstrate those four locations. This would be left over bank at station zero. And then the red dot here is station 30. That'd be left over bank right over bank at station 70 and then station 100 here in the cross section would be uh, the right over bank location for that lateral structure so i'm going to select left over bank heck raz supports up to two lateral structures defined between any two given cross sections if two are used then they must be placed on opposite sides of the channel you can't have a lateral structure two lateral structures on the same side of the channel between the same two cross sections and the river station of each lateral structure must be different. HECRAS allows for a lateral structure to encompass up to 100 cross sections. If more cross sections need to be encompassed, then a new lateral structure must be used. Also, as far as flow direction, the positive direction is out of the river channel. So the upstream side of the lateral structure is the river channel itself. And then the downstream side would be the lake in this case. It would be leaving the channel. Therefore, positive flow through the lateral structure would be leaving the, the river or the reach. Back to this interface here, the plan data shows that optimization. This option allows for steady flow modeling or the initial conditions of unsteady flow model. If I click on this optimization button, it opens up the steady flow editor and then the optimization option. So 
uh, that's this dialog box right here. I'm not going to actually fill this out in this lesson. That'll be for another lesson. But just so you know where you can access that, you go up to Run, Steady Flow Analysis, and then Options, and then Flow Optimization. This is the same interface that popped up. When optimization is turned on, the software calculates the flow out of the lateral structure, and then it redu reduces the flow in the main river, and then recalculates the profile of the main river. This operation continues over and again until there is a balance between the calculated and assumed flows from the main river. Beside the optimization button, there's also this breach button right here. This is a little bit beyond the scope of this lesson and will be talked about in a later lesson when we get to unsteady flow analysis. The next frame down in this interface for lateral structure is the tail water connection. So we have a few different options here. The default is out of the system. And that just means that water that leaves through the lateral structure is out of the system. It's not added anywhere else. It's no longer accounted for. So that requires no additional parameters. Our other options here are storage area or 2D flow area, which would be like to a lake here. This is a storage area. I just called it lake one. So we'd have to go ahead and specify uh, which one that is. Okay, so I clicked on this set storage area button and then lake one is my only storage area. So I click OK and then that assignment has been made. The last option for type is a cross section of a river station or river reach. So if I select that, then I'd have to select the river station and river reach and then specify the details. I only have one river and one reach, so it can't like float into itself. So I'm just gonna go back and change it to the storage area for lake one. Below that is a frame for overflow computation method. This option is used to control what equations are used to compute the flow across the lateral structure. By default, this use weir equation is selected, but you can also click on this normal 2D equation domain. There's more information about these calculations in the user's manual. There's also a checkbox here for use velocity. If you happen to be using a, a 2D flow area, this option is only used when the lateral structure is connected to a 2D flow area. So I'm connected to a storage area. I'm going to leave that unchecked. If our lateral structure happens to have any culverts, then we can specify if there's flaps on those culverts, which uh, prevent flow in either direction. I'm just going to say no, no flaps. And then the structure type here, we have two options. The default here is just weir gate culvert diversion rating curves. This is the one I'm going to select because I'm going to add a couple of these features. The other option here is linear routing. The first option actually uses the hydraulic calculations to determine the flow through the lateral structure based on the geometry, the inverse, the water surface elevation, and so on. But if you use linear routing, this is computationally faster and more stable. It's, sim it's a simpler option, but it requires calibration. Okay, so I'm going to change it back to a uh, weird gate culvert and diversion rating curves. But if you do use linear routing, you have to specify a, a linear routing coefficient that ranges from zero to one where zero represents no flow through the lateral structure and one represents maximum flow. Again, that's uh, something that would require calibration. All right, let's go ahead and add a lateral structure. Uh, we have to add a weir or embankment and then things like gates and culverts, diversion rating curves and outlet time series is all optional. But let's go ahead and start with our weir embankment. This is a good place to start. Let's specify the top weir width as 10 feet. The weir computation is versus, uh, either standard or Hagar method. So if we select standard, then we just specify either energy grade line or water surface elevation as the height reference, and then our weir coefficient. If I happen to select the Hagar's equation, there's a few different parameter values that you'd have to select for that. But I'm gonna go back to standard. Now for the stationing, remember this is along the left bank of the channel. I'm going to skip ahead to this headwater distance to upstream cross section. So I'm going to say this is 20 feet. Lateral structure starts 20 feet downstream of that 200 foot uh, station, which is the top of our river reach. So that means zero here represents station 180 along the river reach, 30, 30, then 40, 40, and then 70. Okay, let me put in the elevations now. So let's go with, I'm going to take a quick peek at my cross section elevations here. Go up to River Station 200. So the peak elevation is 92. And then at the 100 feet down, the peak elevation is 91 for ground surface. So let me go back to the lateral weir. And then we can say it's 95. So it protrudes out just a few feet. Then we'll end it at 95. 
So 70 feet of stationing is actually going to be uh, River Station 110. This will uh, hopefully it'll be a little more clear once it's done and we can see it on the plan view. So hang tight with me. Actually, I'm going to say that downstream stationing is 95 elevation as well. Let's stay at 95. Then I'm going to say 80, 80 here, and then 95. Okay, let's go ahead and just see what that looks like. I know I'm skipping over some of the details here, but if I click OK, here's my lateral structure. Okay, that was uh, similar. I needed to put another 80 where I put 95 here. So let me go back to the editor. We're embankment. Okay, this needs to be a 40, and then OK. And then OK, it's great. So that updated the image. So now what you're seeing is the weir length is 70 feet long. This is this is looking eastward. And actually, if I click, the plan view should update as well. Okay, very cool. So now we see that this lateral structure is now feeding into Lake 1. There should be 20 feet here, 70 feet here, and then 10 feet here. If I wanted to switch it so it was maybe 10 feet, 70 feet, 20 feet, that's not a problem. I'll go back to the lateral structure, weir embankment. Switch this 20 to a 10, so it's just going to ship upstream 10 feet, and then click OK. So now we have our cross section for 200, our station 2. There's 10 feet here, 70 feet here, and then another 20 feet before we have river station 100 one feet. And then if I just uh, see, yeah, so this shifted upstream just a little bit. Okay, back to lateral structure, we are in embankment. We need to specify the weir type. Our options are broad crested, OG spillway, sharp crested, and zero height. Broad crested doesn't need any additional parameter because it knows the geometry of the weir right here. But if I select on like OG or sharp, um, sorry, zero height. Well, okay, I guess OG is the only one that requires a design energy head value. All right, so I'm going to close that. Uh, below the weir in embankment, we can add gates and culverts. I'll talk about gates next. Gates are optional, but uh, let's add one anyway. I'm going to select sluice gate and then put in a coefficient of 0 0.6 here. Now, the, if I look at the cross section here, say, for instance, I want to put in um, a square shaped gate just below the weir, then what I would do is uh, go ahead and get the width. So I believe this is 10 feet of width. So we'll type that in here. The units for these values of height, width, and invert are in feet if you're using English units, otherwise it's uh, meters. So the height, I'll say this is also 15 feet because this is 15 feet, so it would probably look good. And then the invert, the invert is going to be, let's see, let's put it at, let's put it at 55, just see what that looks like. Okay, so the last thing I need to do here is specify the station. This is the center line of the gate. So I believe that would be 30 and 40. So 35, which should make it line up just right. So we'll call it 35. And I'm going to say there's only one gate here. I'll call this gate one. I could have multiple gates that have that are identical as long as they share the same properties that I've already input in this interface, such as sharing the same height, width, invert, and uh, you know gate type and so on. So this gate one group is really a group of gates. It may only refer to one great gate, like I'm having it done here, but it could refer to multiple gates. Okay, so if I click OK to that, cool. We have a similar size opening right here. This is my gate. I'm going to go make a few edits to the gate just to demonstrate how it works. So I could add a few other gates to my gate group. I'll call it gate two and gate three. I could position that at uh, maybe one to the left and then one to the right. And then click OK. So now I have three gates here. And then let's add a second gate group. Up here, I can create a new gate, rename, delete, and copy. So if I wanted to copy gate one and have all the same parameters, it automatically called it gate two, but I could rename that if I wanted to right here. I'll just leave it at gate two. But what I want to do is change the invert to something less, like how about 35? And then that would give me three more gates down here. Now, this is probably overkill, but I just want to see it on the page anyway. And there it is. Okay, I'm going to delete all those gates because that uh, doesn't leave me any room for culverts. So I'm just going to go delete the gate group, delete the gate group. Okay, and we got no gates again. Culverts button is right here. Culverts was already covered in pretty good detail back in lesson six, geometric data entering and editing culvert data. I'll leave a link to that video in the, the description of this video as well, in case you want more detailed on culverts, because I'm going to go kind of quick here. You're going to see the exact same culvert interface 
in that lesson as well as inline structures. So basically the gist is you select the culvert group just like we had a gate group and then you can create a new culvert group, rename, delete, and copy. And then for the solution criteria, this is whether the culvert is inlet controlled or outlet controlled, or you can let the computations determine. So I'll just leave it at that. The shape of the culvert is typically either circular or box, but there's a few other ones as well. I'm going to make this a circular culvert, and it's going to be concrete. In that lesson six, I talk about the chart number and the scale number and where you can look these up. But the one line description is listed here in the drop down for a quick reference. I'm going to go ahead and position two circular culverts. So they're going to be centered maybe at station 25 and 45. Okay, so I'm just going to type those numbers in because uh, I thought about them. The diameter is going to be 10 feet. So put that up here. Culvert length. Now the culvert length, the top of the lateral structure I said was 10 feet. So the culvert length, um, being further down in the lateral structure could be longer than 10 feet kind of depends on the geometry of it but i'll just say it's 20 feet entrance loss coefficient i'll say 0 0.5 manning's n for concrete is something usually like 0 0.015 and now the invert this is key this is going to be how about something like 50 and i'll say that's true for the upstream and downstream end now remember upstream end basically means the channel side over here and then the downstream end would be this side over here of the lateral structure. Okay, so let me just give these names. I'll call it Culvert 1 and Culvert 2. And let's click OK. All right, so we got a couple culverts right down there. Looks good. We can do the same thing by adding more culverts and gates and changing up the weir and embankment shape as well. But I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how lateral structures work. Ultimately, though, they give the opportunity for water to flow from the main channel out of the main channel into another location like a storage area, a 2D flow area, or another river reach. And we can define that flow and that structure using this lateral structure editor in HECRAS.